Hi everyone, I'm Julie with Julie's Realty, the broker of Julie's Realty, and we have Nivaldo here, one of our top producers. And the reason for this video is we wanted to discuss some topic. One of the topics here with you is about seller's diligence and the importance of that. So, well, Julie, it is important that when you're selling a property, you know everybody thinks about selling a property. Let me find a buyer. Okay, I find a buyer. So we got the price. So we're good. No, finding buyer is only 60% of the process. Then taking that buyer, going on the contract with the buyer, taking that buyer for the first time that you sign the purchase contract all the way to closing is another 40% effort. That transaction can fall apart for many, many, many reasons. And today we're going to discuss some of those reasons, some of the things that you should do to avoid this contract falling apart. So you can go all the way to closing having no problems. And, uh, Julie, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what do they have to take in consideration when looking at the deposit? Yeah, that's very important. <clears throat> you know, once a, a property goes under contract, you actually you have a, a sales price that you agree on, and then you also have a um, earnest deposit. So that's an important item to look at, um, and a lot of times sellers will overlook the amount being put into mm -hmm. the deposit. Sometimes, you know, we see contracts coming through with a thousand dollars, and you know, that's not a sufficient amount enough that if the contract fall apart, you know, they'll be willing to lose that amount and not have a problem. So there has to be a substantial amount in an earnest deposit that a buyer is putting down to show that they're serious. Serious, yeah. And, um, you know, because that's the money that they're putting on the line in the case that the deal does not go through. So that's very, very important. So you would say... So you would say, I'm sorry. So you would say that maybe between five to seven percent of the purchase price yeah, would be a on, decent amount on cash deals. I think ten percent. Ten percent in yeah. cash deals, and then on financing deals, typically five, five to seven. Five to seven percent, mm -hmm. and it is important. It is important, guys, because the problem is this is the difference that we're forgetting about it. When you're a seller and you sign off on a contract, something like this, on a purchase contract, your unit or your property will go automatically pending. So that means that from that moment on you're gonna start losing all the traffic of the buyers, you know? So right there, you're on the contract with them and you cannot step out unless they follow to with this diligence that they have, the buyer has to do as well. So the other subject that I wanna talk about besides the deposit, we wanna talk about pre-qualification. Let's say that 80% of the cases, the buyer is using a finance transaction. He's getting a loan to buy the property. So uh, what, would, what would we do about it? How, how do you check this uh, with the lender? Well, a pre-approval letter could be a simply just a piece of paper. Uh -huh. So in order to make sure that you do have a valid pre-approval, it's very important to do diligence. Some of the things that you can do is contact the lender and verify that in fact the, the lender has verified their credit report, uh, pulled their credit report, I apologize, that they've also verified their income, they've verified their income tax returns, um, and it wasn't just a verbal pre-approval, which a lot of times it's just a verbal pre-approval, pre which yeah. means absolutely nothing. I mean, I mean, red flags would be the, for example, with the offer, you get a pre-approval from, I don't know, one of the biggest banks. You know, you have to personally, and I will tell you, if you have a good listing agent, you don't have to worry about any of this because they will do that for you. Correct. That's part of the, in, in the job description. But, you know, the listing agent or yourself, you need to call that lender that is giving the loan. And you need to ask questions to that lender and say, listen, do you verify this buyer's income? Do you verify this buyer's assets? You know, and you have to give that lender the something that is, I think it's on page two, that you have to tell them, hey, can you provide me with a commitment letter in 25 days? So then they have 25 days to give you a commitment letter from the lender. No lender should take longer than that. Correct. Correct? Yeah. So this is very important. And if you happen to be selling a unit that is located inside a condo, then it gets a little bit difficult, you know, because not all lenders can lend in every condo. So what happens is, what happens is, they give you a pre-approval letter from the buyer, mm -hmm. and then 25, 25, 25 days later, the bank says, you know what, we cannot give you the loan because your building does not qualify. And you as a seller, have to go back on the market to start from scratch. And not only that, you lost 25 days of buyer's traffic. Yeah. Okay, so this is very important. Before you sign up, you have to check on every single step of this. Can you tell us about the inspection period? 
How should we approach that? How may, how, what is a normal standard day for the inspection? What should you do to avoid, I mean, the deal to fall apart? Um, well, on the contract, on the standard FAR bar as a contract, the standard date is 15 days, which is way too long. Nobody should need 15 days. 15 do you days agree? Was, no, no, I don't think you need 15 days. Yeah, 15 days is way too long to do an inspection. An inspection can be done in a few days. So typically, my recommendation would be to do seven-day inspection. Seven-day inspection. Mm -hmm. also, what I also, what I would recommend to the sellers, listen, you own this property for a while already. Right? You know what's wrong with the property. So what I would do, there is a document that is called seller disclosure. Mm -hmm. I will send, when the purchase contract is signed, I will send a seller disclosure to the, to the buyer, telling them why everything that I know that is wrong with the property. Why? Because like that, if the buyer doesn't want it, they, you don't have to waste 10 to 7 days with them. They say, listen, I'm not, I, my AC is not working properly. I am not going to fix this. I am not going to give you the credit so you can take the property like this or I can look for another buyer. Correct. And you say, because believe me, 7 to 10 days, there is a lot of traffic of buyers. It's a lot of opportunity that you can miss being out of the, out of the, out of the market. Yes, okay. All right, so uh, also uh, another, but this one goes for only condominiums. Uh, um, what would you say to sellers that are that they're selling a unit that is located inside the cond in a condominium? Well, there are a few things to consider. One is that financing is available because there is a lot yes, of myths out there that say, you know, you can't get financing in your building, and that's not always accurate. Um, but some of the things that you need to take into consideration is if somebody is looking to purchase your unit and for instance they have a pet, you need to know what are the regulations in your building as far as the size mm -hmm. requirement, how many pets do they have, what kind of pet it is because last thing you want to do is have everything approved and then the deal fall apart because now the buyer can't get approved because they have a dog that's 50 pounds and the limit is 25 it's in your 25. building. So those are also things that you need to take into consideration and ask the right questions. Or maybe you're looking, to, uh, maybe you're looking at a buyer that is planning to buy the unit, and, e and neither of the agent knows the building, and you have a buyer that wants to buy a unit because he wants to start uh, renting the unit in short term. Uh -huh. And then out of the sun, uh, five days before the closing, they find out that the building does not allow short term rentals. So that's why it's important. Or not it's even just short term rentals. What if they want to immediately buy it and start renting it for yearly rentals and the building has a restriction for one year, no renting? Or maybe there is a limitation in your uh -huh. building as to how many units can actually be rented at one single time. So those are important things to find out. Are they buying it as an owner-occupant? Are they buying this as an investment? What is the primary use of the unit uh -huh. that they're purchasing? No, and, and, and as well, you, if you live in a condominium, as a seller, you need to deliver to the buyers, you need to deliver to the buyer the condo docs and bylaws and, bylaws and the, finan the latest financial statements of the building. You as a seller have to deliver that to the buyer and the buyer needs to sign off for that, that he received those documents. After that, the buyer by the Florida law has three days to review the condo docs and the bylaws. And in those three days, he has the option to opt out of the contract with no excuse. no excuse. He said he can say, I review the condo docs, I do not like and not agree with the bylaws, I don't want to be in this contract anymore. What happens is many sellers and many listing agents forget this step. So the problem is right when you're getting down all the way to closing, they have second thought about the unit. They say, you know what, we saw a better deal. Let's step out of the contract. And their friendly attorneys will ask him, did they say, did they give you the condo docs? No, then you don't need an excuse. You can step out of the contract with no problems. So hopefully you hire someone to sell your property if you're not able to sell it yourself that really knows the area or the building that you live in it so you can avoid keep wasting time. Believe me, I've seen properties and the places that I do business in going on the contract for three or four times and they never close because they never did this. And then they may follow the diligence of the seller. Mm -hmm. right? They did some steps, but they missed some of the other steps. So you got to make sure you do everything from A to Z in order to avoid any possible fallouts. Because any little mistake can cause a fallout and your property back on the market with lost buyers. With more days more on the market. Days on the market. Maybe the prices now have gone down, so you've lost some money. Um, and 
you know, your carrying expenses are just adding on every time your property, every day that your property is on the market. Okay. So, Julie, thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you, Guys, Ronaldo. and remember, if you have any question or concern regarding any of the steps, if you are a seller, if you are a real estate agent, you can give us a call. We would be more than happy to guide you through it. Okay? You can reach us at 305-751-6400. You can also follow us on our social media at Julie's Realty Miami and... Nevada, South Florida Investments. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Happy Friday.